It is uh, taken from the Gospel of Mark in chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. I'll be reading from the NIV. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethania at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a cold tide there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street tied at a doorway. As they un untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the, the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming of the, the kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. And this is the word of God. You may all be seated. Praise God. We are, we are blessed today for uh, uh, there will be a five uh, wonderful great men of God who will be sharing their, uh, their uh, experiences, their testimonies uh, when they uh, attended, five of these men uh, attended uh, uh, the, the recent walk to Emmaus at uh, West Des Moines United Methodist Church. Uh, one time I was asked by... Uh, by uh, uh, when I attended one of the uh, uh, district events at Northwest District of the Iowa Annual Conference, they asked me, what's, what's my secret in ministry? And I told them three things. One, number one is prayer. Amen? Number one is prayer. And number two, I told them, I have a loud voice. And it's the way I preach the gospel. And number three is the walk to Emmaus. Your pastor is uh, a promoter of uh, supporter of the walk to Emmaus. There are three groups here uh, in Iowa of the Iowa walk, of the walk to Emmaus. We have a Cedar Rapids Iowa walk to Emmaus, and then we have the Terrace Hills walk to Emmaus based uh, at Corning United Methodist Church. And the biggest group is the Iowa walk to Emmaus, in which your pastor uh, belongs. Uh, I, I, I am part of that uh, since uh, uh, when I became a pastor of, at Emmitsburg First United Methodist Church. And today, we will be hearing the testimonies of these five great men. Will you, can we all give them a round of applause? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I have a loud voice, too. All right, um, I never said this the last service. I was still kind of waking up, but after walk to Emmaus, I was, I was kind of upset with myself for a sin that I was doing and that most of us do. I'll tell you the story on how that came to. In the last two years, I've grown a lot in my faith. I've had a real passion for continuing to learn and grow in my faith. So I decided to sign up for a walk to Emmaus. In Matthew 7, verse 3, Jesus says, Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? I, at the time, I wasn't thinking that was really fitting me. But... It, when we see people, a lot of times we judge them. When we got got there, we got separated into uh, different groups. And I heard some of the stories, look around at some of these guys, and some of these guys were all tatted up and long hair. And, you know, I worked for the police department, and these guys, they, they looked like criminals. I mean, pretty bad. Um,
then we got separated into groups and uh, there was a guy named Harvey in my group and he told us his story and how he'd been to prison for manufacturing and selling drugs. He'd lost parental rights to his daughter. Um, he's been in, in and out of prison most of his life. He, was, he wasn't a good guy. But Harvey, um, he really, he changed me. He had found God a few years ago, and him and I, he, he became, we became really close that weekend. And by the end of Emmaus, God, God opened my eyes that I was judging people, and I didn't even... I didn't think I was doing that at the time. Harvey actually has his daughter coming to live with him in Des Moines for her senior there this year. His daughter is one of the top track athletes in the nation, and she was starting to hang out with the wrong crowd in St. Louis. Her mom thought that from what Harvey has gone through and how he has changed his life completely, she was going to send his daughter to him to, to live in Des Moines for her senior year. And the way he's changed, it's, it's just amazing, his story and the stories I heard at Walk to Emmaus. It taught me no matter who you are, what you have done in your past, no one is beyond salvation. We need to learn to take the plank out of our own eye first before we start to think and judge other people. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Bill Nelson. My wife, Jean, and I have been members at St. Paul's United Methodist Church for over three years. And it's been a blessing and joy to have met, met so many of you that are part of the church family. The first thing I'd like to say is that I'm not really comfortable speaking in front of a lot of people. I've done it quite a bit over the years, but definitely get a little nervous. So I brought all these notes along, and <laughs> I brought this little book that they gave us at the walk to Emmaus. I'd thought about signing up for the walk to Emmaus, and... and uh, uh, but I didn't, and uh, the previous Sunday, Louie come and talked to me, asked if I'd consider going. Uh, I, I thought maybe it'd be a good idea and a good way to meet David and Rod, Steve and Blake, and I got to meet these guys through various activities and meals. But being assigned to the table of Andrew, I really got to know, enjoy, laugh, and cry with six other men of faith. Hopefully, God willing, we'll be bonded in friendship and fellowship for a long time to come. As the weekend started, try to imagine no phones, TV, or radio. Okay. No distractions from the hectic world outside. The doors we had just walked through allowed God, Jesus' his Son, and the Holy Spirit to have all my attention for three days. It was about 6 p.m. on Thursday, and at home I had no idea that my wife had become ill and that her family was taking care of her. Now back to this little book. The first page reads, An Invitation to Spiritual Journey. The following prayer and scripture will aid you during your Emmaus weekend as well as in all the days to follow. Nothing is more important than your time with God, your Creator, Jesus, your brother, and the Holy Spirit, your source of strength and direction. We hope that you will use this booklet to become more intentional in your spiritual life, in your private and family devotions, in group reunions, and at Emmaus gatherings, and on times of spiritual retreat. We pray that this booklet will help you support your life of prayer, spiritual growth, study, and Christian action. The walk to Emmaus changed me in a way that's hard to describe. Remember that I said being inside the church with no distractions for three days? 
Those three days of fellowship allowed me to see the grace of God, increase my faith, and know that by the power of the Holy Spirit that I am one of God's children and also a servant of the Lord. I now encourage you, encourage you, both men and women, to inquire about upcoming walks to Emmaus. You won't be disappointed. In conclusion, I'd like to thank all those that prayed for me at my walk, all those that have been praying for Jean. I'm thankful and overjoyed I did the walk to Emmaus, and again, would like to thank all the sponsors. Bless you all. I'm going to close with the prayer. The prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, who lives and reigns forever, we give you thanks for all the gifts that you have bestowed upon us. Amen. Thank you and de Calores. Amen. Good morning. I'm Dave Kincaid. The walk to Emmaus. I was skeptical. I knew a lot of people who'd been on the walk to Emmaus, and every one of them had had a life-changing experience. But how? How could a three-day Christian retreat really change your life? Don't get me wrong, I was really looking forward to having three days just to work on my relationship with God. But change my life? I was doubtful. Some of you know, and some of you may not, that in 2013, I had a brain aneurysm. It changed me. I used to be a real strong man physically. It changed my personality, my emotions. My brain just did not work the same. I'd suffer a brain injury. Because of my mental changes, I put my family through a lot, and that I regret. But my spiritual connection to God had changed too. I was known by the nickname Brother Dave. I led Bible studies and taught Sunday school. I prayed constantly and prayed with others. I led group prayers. I did Christian mission work and I read the Bible constantly. The desire to do those things just wasn't there anymore. It just, I just did not have that spiritual connection. I had been through a life-changing experience. I missed having that spiritual connection. I asked God many times with no real self-pity, but just looking for an answer, why? Why did these things have to happen? And I got no real answer. So I went to Emmaus. As I, walk, as I went through my walk, I did start to change. I could feel it. We prayed, we worshiped, we took communion, but this time it was different. I did and was having a life-changing experience. I can't really say exactly where it happened. I'm happy to say that I'm more committed to my family than ever, and, and my spiritual connection is stronger. It's not the same as it was before, but it is stronger. I was told by others that had been on a walk that by Sunday evening they didn't want to go home. They wanted to stay. I was just the opposite. I was ready to get home. I wanted to share with my family my changes, how I felt, and what I'd been through, what I'd learned. Near the end of the walk, they gave us this necklace. Gave everyone that went on the walk a necklace. The necklace has the symbol of Emmaus on it, and on the back, it has a few words. Christ is counting on you. You know, that's, that's cool. I wear mine every day to remind me that Christ and my family are counting on me. It says in the Bible that God has a purpose for everyone, and I definitely knew mine. Here a few days ago, with a much different attitude in my heart, I ask God, why? Why did these things have to happen? And this time he answered me. He simply said to test your faith. The Bible is full of examples where I tested people's faith. Okay, I could accept that. And then he said something else that I didn't expect. 
He said, and you're going to pass the test. So that made me feel good. So I would recommend that everyone go to the walk to Emmaus. You will have a life-changing experience. Amen. Good morning, I'm Steve Rachi. I sat at the James table and uh, it was a good and positive experience there. I felt the power and presence of the Holy Spirit and seen it on the faces of others. Uh, we had uh, 15 speakers during our three days and all giving testimony and telling their story with their walk with Jesus. And uh, we broke into small groups and uh, come to find out uh, there was men struggling with things that I struggled with in my past. And I was able to testify to them and offer them encouragement, you know, to let them know that they were on the right path. Uh, the walk to Emmaus uh, is a great thing. Uh, it's helped me enhance my daily walk with Jesus. And uh, it's just, it's a good thing. Um, on Saturday night when we were there, uh, some fourth dayers and their families come to visit and uh, surprised us. And... Uh, saying to us, uh, have you seen Jesus, my Lord? It was a very moving experience and uh, one I won't forget. I'd say overall, uh, the whole three-day weekend was a great experience. I recommend that, you've gone, that you go if you haven't. And uh, I'm glad I went, even though I had to bunk between Blake <laughs> Thank you. My menopause kicked in. Sorry, I'm hot. All the kids that are in my Wednesday... Tom said it's true. Would all the kids that are in our Wednesday night group please stand up? Hooper girls? I'll call you out if you're not standing. That a girl. I want you to look at all these kids. <clears throat> they give me strength, Sam. They give me strength every week. There's more love that these kids show than any group of people I've run across. You can sit down now. Everybody that's in my men's group, will you stand up? Saturday mornings, kids, look around at these guys. If you ever have trouble, if you're ever concerned, if you ever need any help, go to any one of them, okay? All right, thanks, guys. What we're talking about in our kids, in our Wednesday night group is three different kinds of Christians. You have the rebels, the posers, and the losers, right? Aren't we discussing them? Rebels are people that rebel against God and hate God. Posers are people that come to church on Sunday and forget everything in between Monday and Saturday. And then losers are people that have given up their life for Christ. Walk to Emmaus. Louis asked me if I'd go on the walk to Emmaus, and I had no idea what it was. And I'm getting to know Louis good enough now that that scared me a little because... Yeah, he's a great man of God, but uh, yeah, I don't know what he's leading me into. <laughs> <clears throat> I had the feeling that I was going for someone else. I knew that there were other people going, and I knew that there were some people that didn't want to go by themselves, so I thought I'd go. I had no idea what it was. I'd had people like Mark and Carla tell me that it's a great experience, go on it, so I trust them, I went. Well, the first night, Louie took us to, uh, out to eat before we got there, and we went, what was the name of the place we went to? Hibachi. Hibachi Grill. 
and I'm following Louie around because I'm infatuated with Bing's cooking and what they eat in the Philippines, so I'm walking through these uh, buffet lines with Louie, and he tells me what to take, and there's this really bright green stuff that I took, didn't know what it was, I put it on my plate, and then he t gets to the cold salad bar, and he said, you gotta take some of this. And I didn't have my glasses on, so I couldn't really see what I was taking, but I saw that there were, there were balls or clumps of stuff. I get back to the table, and it's a cold salad, and all those little clumps were small octopus. I ate it, and the green stuff was seafood, and I thought, what in the world is he getting me into the rest of the weekend? <laughs> like the guy said, we, we split up into groups when we got to walk to Emmaus. And for those of you that don't know what it is, it's a Christian retreat that a bunch of guys get together and explore their relationship with Christ. And um, still thinking that I'm going for someone else. And those of you that know me know I'm a little stubborn. A little stubborn, right, Sonia? We had the opportunity the first night to go and uh, sit in the sanctuary and do reflection time like we do on Wednesdays. We separated and uh, I was sitting in one of the pews with my head bowed and a half an hour later I couldn't move. I was stuck and you kids have heard this, I've told you this. Um, something was preventing me from getting up and walking out like everybody else and I didn't know what it was. It was the weirdest thing. Louis asked us last week if we've seen Jesus. Well, I felt him. Um, I couldn't, couldn't move, I was froze. A hand came on my shoulder and um, asked me if I was okay. And at that point I bawled, I started crying. I didn't know why I was crying. I didn't know why I couldn't get up. Something was wrong. And um, finally I realized that there are things in my past that I've asked for forgiveness for hundreds of times, but I've never accepted that he forgave me. This hand that was on my shoulder with a voice coming with it said that Christ did that for you. He died for you on the cross. You just need to let go. 20 years I've been dealing with that. I didn't know I was dealing with it. Wow, what, what, an, what an experience. What, what a relief. When the, when the man hanging to the left of Jesus on the cross told Jesus to remember him and his kingdom and God told him that from this day on you will be with me in paradise. That's me. I've had troubles in my life. I've had a lot of things. And God, Jesus forgave me. God forgave me. So those of you that are hanging on to those extra, that extra baggage, let go of it. It's only holding you back. If you get the opportunity to go, you've got to do it. Thank you. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This uh, part of uh, our worship today is your pastor and this uh, great and awesome man promoting the walk to Emmaus. As I've said, uh, um, there are three groups here in Iowa, in the state of Iowa, for the walk to Emmaus. We have a Cedar Rapids uh, group, then we have Terrace Hills, and then uh, the, big, the big group is the Iowa walk to Emmaus. We praise and glorify God for that. And I'm sure this great man, this great man, can, can shout every day in their lives, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Unlike the, uh, the, uh, those people, who were with Jesus in his triumphant entry in our text this morning as we are celebrating Palm Sunday. The same people, after five days, they were the same people who were shouting, crucify him, crucify him. The same people, brothers and sisters in Christ. I wonder what Jesus thought as he listened to all these people who were shouting Hosanna during that time. And most of them really did not know him at all, brothers and sisters. And when these people eventually died and met Jesus face to face, I wonder 
if he asked them, Why did you say good things to me and then mocked me? Why did you shout, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, and then on, on Friday you shouted, Crucify me? I, as I have said, I praise and glorify God for for being able to bring uh, five uh, men there at the walk to Emmaus. And it is my vision that all of you, all of us here, the adult members of this church, and even for the youth, if they decide to go to uh, the youth version of the uh, walk to Emmaus, uh, it's my vision that all of us will be able to experience what they have experienced. Can I hear a loud amen? When you go there, you, you will not spend any. You will not, uh, this, your sponsor will bring you there. Your sponsors will, will pay for, for the, the entire duration of your stay there. And we'll bring you back home. We praise and glorify God. Their eyes were opened. They have a deeper understanding now of God's grace. And that's my prayer for all of you. And I know the song, Have You Seen Jesus My Lord, which is one of the Emmaus songs, echoes, echoes every day in their hearts and their minds. Have you seen Jesus my Lord? He's here in plain view. Take a look, open your eyes. He'll show life to you. Have you ever looked at the cross with a man hanging in pain? Find the look of love in his eyes. Then I say you've seen. Jesus, my Lord. Where is Jesus right now in your life? Where is Jesus right now in your life, brothers and sisters? If you were here last Sunday, I mentioned this last Sunday, real Christianity is not becoming part of a religion or a denomination. And if you were here last Sunday, I have mentioned this. Religion or becoming part of a denomination is a burden to your life. But a living relationship with Jesus Christ will sustain you through life and on into eternity. True Christianity is pointed to Jesus Christ and it's, it, it is focused on an offer. And what is that offer? Salvation, brothers and sisters. That is the offer of Jesus Christ. And a lot of Christian churches, mainstream Christian churches, for decades and centuries have missed that message. And we continue and continue to neglect and ignore that message. Everything is pointed to Jesus Christ and is pointed to an offer. And what is that offer again? Salvation, brothers and sisters. Where is Jesus right now in your life? Where is Jesus right now? It's between you and God. I'm just here as your guide. I'm just here as your pastor. I'm just here to remind you about it. But it is still you who will decide if you want to really have a relationship with Jesus. Can I hear a loud amen to that? Brothers and sisters in faith, may I ask everyone right now to please stand Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters in faith, always remember that Jesus loves you and He died for you. And He is counting on you. Amen? Praise God. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. May I ask now the, uh, the praise team to please come forward.